Cheapo. It's Poundland special time again. And like all good videos, this one's going to begin with some boobies. Booby. Yes, this drink is called Booby and is therefore a complete gift to any comedian. Also, it comes in weird, in fact, very weird containers that you have to suck. Suckle at the teat of the booby, if you like. Yes, let's see if we can avoid the obvious jokes. No, we can't. All right. Let us unleash a booby from its bra, sorry, packaging. It feels horrible and sticky and clammy and blurg, and is apparently awesome orange flavour. Awesome! It also looks extremely weak, which is less awesome. What other flavours we got, actually? Party pineapple! What have pineapples got to do with parties? No idea. Must be apple or something. No, totally tropical! Now, this is just wrong. Tropical is an orange colour, not green. That's for things that aren't tropical. There's another orange one. Oh, so sticky. Um, and slamming strawberry. Slamming. It's not 1993 anymore. Uh, yeah, that's the same. Uh, do, do you know this isn't actually the stupidest named drink I've ever seen? I mean, it's pretty stupid to have some kids' drinks and call them booby. Big on taste. <laughs> but the rudest named drink I've ever seen is I was in a cash and carry place and they had a crate of energy drinks called Pussy. Doubtless I'm not the only person to have spotted this, so uh, a quick Google search will probably prove I'm not lying. Um, but I've nearly bought some for the uh, endless cavalcade of extremely rude jokes you could make off the back of it, but decided against it on the grounds you had to buy like a case of 24, and it was very expensive. Anyway, I'm whiffering to put off tasting the booby. <clears throat> Go on. How do you get it out of the... Uh... Oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's like something you don't want to see in a hospital. So what happens? Do I twist it off or something? Do I cut it? Um, yeah, oh, crikey. Okay, I brought a sharp knife. And what do I actually need? A pair of scissors. Snipple snip. Right, I'm about to suck on the booby. <coughs> Sorry. Mm. 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 That's watery. Faintly strawberry tasting, pretty much as you would expect for um, a cheap kiddies drink type thing. It says tasty new flavour on all of them, I've just noticed. But does that mean it's a new drink? Or do they seriously think that nothing in the world has ever been orange flavoured before? No idea. I'll go and I'll try some of the tropical while we're at it. Whilst I've got the scissors out. This Actually, this can't be marketed for children, surely because they'd have to have a fairly sharp pair of scissors and quite strong hands in order to get into them. Boobies that will uh, injure your children. We never thought the day would come to pass. Mm, that's, that's um, yeah, generic fruit flavour, I think is the best description of that. It kind of tastes of, it tastes of nothing, but if somebody asked you what it tasted like, you would probably say fruit. Yeah, kind of wishing I hadn't had another sip of that, actually. Ugh. Well, they're not horrible. They're not very nice, really. They're very much as you would expect for six for a pound, or in fact 99p. I think it was a 99p store's job. Um, yeah, I don't recommend. Except, of course, for the endless novelty of having something called booby. Look, squishy booby, sticky booby. See, endless amusement and puerile fun. Okay, let's clear this off. Now that we've taken the mick out of things that sound a bit rude, let's take the mick out of dead people! Hooray! Well, not us directly, in fact. Blame the manufacturers of the King of Pop Water Ball. Legend by... Uh, what is that supposed to be? Regency? That's not a letter. It's an abomination against uh, typefaces. Oh, well... <clears throat> Apparently, Michael Jackson died. Remember that? Well, you may also remember that apparently his name is a trademark or something because the uh, 99p store people have decided to sell you these without his name on, despite the fact it's obviously supposed to commemorate his demise because there's photos of him on it. Warning, this item is not a toy. It is for ornamental purpose only. Yeah because you're really going to want this on your mantelpiece, aren't you? Um, Regency is the registered trademark of Ackerman Group PLC. Well, thanks for that. So, um, this can be one of two things, apparently. 
I've made a point of not mentioning the picture because I can't make out what it's supposed to be. Is it a hat resting on a glove? I think so. And the other one, um, oh, this design, meaning it's this one. I don't know what that is, but it looks like a load of stuff a pirate used to wear in a pile. All right, go on then. Let's see what poor old Michael Jackson has been commemorated with in the cheapest shops in the world. Oh, wow. Christmas has come early, and it's a rubbish Christmas. Right, let's have a look at the pictures. Yeah, that's definitely Michael Jackson, isn't it? Um, not much to comment on there. That's probably Michael Jackson could be an impersonator. And there he is again and again. So what actually is this? Um, I, up I don't know if you can make it out on camera. I barely can with the naked eye. It is a pair of shoes up against the world's smallest microphone stand. The microphone being clutched by two tiny, what look like chainmail gloves painted black. Is, is this in any way something that Michael Jackson was associated with? Old shoes and armoured gloves? What? Is that supposed to be doing the moonwalk or something? It doesn't make any sense because the other shoe's the wrong way round. It's him doing the moonwalk after his legs have been destroyed. Also, it's got really bad paint. It's uh, the shoes are sort of rubbing off on the microphone and vice versa. Also, he would have to have the tiny hands of a tiny weedy rhesus monkey as compared to the size of his shoes and gloves by the looks of it. Either that or giant comedy feet. So, yeah, poor old Michael Jackson. Not only is he dead, but he's being commemorated with absolute crap. That'll be going on my mantelpiece just before I demolish the house. Anyway, let's get things back a bit more jolly with some love crackers. You know, love crackers, that uh, amusing novelty that doesn't actually exist. Um, I can only imagine they had some left over from Christmas and some hearts to stick on them or something. As you probably guessed, this is left over from Valentine's Day crap. Um, I think they were just desperate for things to sell and thought, hey, I know what people want to buy. Things that are probably Christmas, but it's got Valentine's on because people buy crap at Valentine's Day because they feel they should. I don't know. Well, I suppose I do slightly because I bought it. Then again, I just wanted to take the mick on the internet. Right, so it's Valentine's Day. You're with your beloved. You've each got an end of the cracker. You're going to pull it so it snaps. Hmm, can't actually do it from this angle. Hang on. There we are. That's better. And what is inside to make your Valentine's Day complete? Some paper. Yes, you've got your Valentine's Day hat! Which is in no way just a hat from a Christmas cracker. Obviously, it's a special Valentine's Day one. You can tell by the way it's red and screwed up and thrown over my shoulder. Um, what have we got here? Valentine's Day joke? Why can't two elephants go swimming? They only have one pair of trunks. Ho, ho, ho. It's just a Christmas cracker joke with some hearts put on it. This is actually weaker than I had even suspected. Um, love. Love. And a burn mark, look, from where the um, cracker went off. Quality. As it's Valentine's Day, I will... Location. I promise to give you the above at the time of your choice. Ooh, sexy. As it's Valentine's Day, I will file for divorce. Location, your stupid mother's house. Greetings, it is I, Chef Excellence, here to look at some Poundland crap for the kitchen. And today we are looking at... I love you, Toast Stamp! What it is, is a bit of plastic that you shove into your bread to make an indentation of the letters forming the words, I love you. Then, when your toast has been toasted, you can give it to your beloved. And she will be amazed at the beautiful message you have left for her. And you will be in her heart forever. Except, of course, that is rubbish! For what will actually happen is you will have to give her burnt toast! Because if you don't burn the toast, then you can't see the letters properly! And then you still probably won't be able to see the letters by the time you have smeared some butter and jam and stuff on it. What an absolute waste of time! 
And to be honest with you, if you are the sort of person who thinks you can win a lady's heart by writing I love you on a piece of toast, then frankly you will die alone and unloved in a ditch somewhere. Maybe there'll be an axe in the back of your head. I don't care. Hmm. Think I may have got a bit too dark at the end there. Addendum. With no thought for my own safety, I purchased an entire crate of pussy. I can confirm that it's less fizzy and tastes far more like fruit juice than other energy drinks I've tried. As a result, I recommend the following tagline for use in advertising. Nothing gets you going like a juicy pussy. Thank you, thank you. And here are we. Try the steak.